many years ago i was traveling to abu dhabi with my dear friend dave dave milner we were waiting at the hotel trying to get a cab we did not get a cab we saw that the building where we had to go and for those of you who are conversant with abu dhabi you would remember the big etisalat building which has the big football on the top of it so dave and i decided to walk to that place we were decked up in suits it was abu dhabi summer and we lost our way by the time we reached there which was almost about 45 minutes of walk we were totally convinced that we have fooled ourselves into this walk we will never do that today because today data and artificial intelligence will exactly tell us when we will get the cab it will tell us which route to take it will also calculate the time that we will take and therefore it's a very different world analytics is today actually driving our entire life whether it is the entertainment that we are consuming whether it is uh, the food that we are eating even the friendships that we are creating are all driven by analytics people analytics is one thing that we are talking about for years about its importance 84% of the people currently the, the business leader the ceo say that people analytics is the most critical aspect where hr needs to step up however just 2% as per deloitte organizations really have some kind of a mature people analytics tool in the current times people analytics has become even more important so therefore dave milner is the man for us to be talking to today welcome dave dave Thank is you very much. an hr guru most of us know him as the founder of hr curator he has been for the last almost 30 years one of the most sought after global experts on hr transformation and hr analytics he's been the occupational psychologist at IBM and led global practices for it i've had the privilege of working with dave for multiple years and like the one that i told you we have many many uh, memories together why is it that data and analytics is becoming the life blood of running hr organizations these days yeah it's a great question shakur and i think I think if you think about the current situation we in that the the pandemic and the new normal that we're aspiring to over the next few months whatever that may look like um has been a real catalyst for accelerating trends of change and as you rightly say people have been talking about using data analytics in the HR function for a long time um and and I think we have now got to start to step up and start to think about in our new world what hr does and more importantly how can hr demonstrate value i th- i think we're in what i call a 3d world a world of data a world of design and a world of digital and and hr has to embrace that because i've had lots of feedback from lots of executives about how wonderful hr has been during the pandemic and and um, i have no doubt that that has that's correct but when i've talked to them about why it's been they they if you like filled the gap of operational capability when line managers are not very good at things and i there can the concern that i've been shared uh, is that maybe that will be forgotten after this is all finished because mm. we haven't really demonstrated the commerciality the strategic value whatever it is so i i think whilst we talked about it i think you know probably lots of organizations have metrics they probably have some technology systems in place you know but that that's looking at what has happened and that's both useful but now we've got to start looking to the future in terms of what could happen you know and i think we've got to take a lead from you know other functions such as marketing you know where they they've been trying to look at if we do this that could happen if we look at what has happened historically these trends suggest that that may happen and and i don't think that that's any different at all because every organization is a data business doesn't matter how small doesn't matter how large you are globally every organization is this is a very this is a very interesting thing what you're saying now hr is supposed to be the custodian of knowledge and learning yes you talked about marketing and how marketing has actually 
leapfrogged uh, forward by using data and analytics more so in in current times when we are seeing e-commerce e-marketing go through the roof yes why do you think and i know you've written the book also on the same topic why do you think hr missed out on being prepared and be ready uh, to unleash the, the potential of data I, my concern, you're right, I wrote a book called Introduction to People Analytics, and it's a book aimed at HR practitioners. It's not aimed at people analytics specialists. And, and, I, and the reason why I went down that route was because I think we've scared what I call, we've scared the messenger, we've scared the HR community. You know, you go to conferences and they talk about all these amazing complex you know, algorithms and equations and stuff that they've done. They produce amazing data visualizations. They talk about data scientists. They talk about all the, the, the complex aspects of statistical analysis. And don't get me wrong, that is needed. But I think one of the things we've got to think about is that basic mathematics can deal with 50 to 60% of data activity, things that are going to be helpful. You know, for example, time is money. Do you know how much you cost per hour? And that's not just salary, but your office mm -hmm. space, your technology, your phone, or you know, what are the costs of an employee? And, and I think we've just got to try and think from that basic point and start to build drawing on you know, data sets and data that's available. And if you, if you haven't got it, you know, think about the build it, you buy it or you borrow it because there are people who can do it, finance. You know, you may not want to talk to finance, but finance have got a lot of expertise and, and acumen around numbers. And, and they have the numbers and we have the stories and we need to put the two together to build a coherent pattern. So I think it, it, it does take time. It, it is something that's not easy to do, you know, but organizations have done it. And, uh, and again, in the book, there are examples of organizations of the, of the journey that they've taken to make their business partners much more data orientated and and, and i'll know, come to I'll, I'll come to those one or two examples but here you are saying a very interesting thing about hr being siloed finance has a lot of data one thing yeah. that i have observed is that hr tends to be very very protective about it about its data you know we have seen how some organizations some hr teams are very hesitant to share data right and then yeah. Add to that the layer of data protection laws, the privacy sentiments around that. How do you think these two things are playing? And what is it that an HR professional or an HR leader need as the new set of lenses today? Well, I, I, I think that the whole data privacy um, aspect is, is incredibly important. You know, privacy is about, you know, regulating how much information about somebody is known to others okay that's the basic principle and obviously with increasing data you know opportunities landscapes etc you know we've got to think about what data do employees have the right to access and what rights should employees have in terms of what data is collected on them so you know i think organizations can't just assume anymore that they can use and abuse whatever information is available you know i think organizations have got to be very transparent about you know data that's being collected what they're going to use it for possibly even get explicit consent i know some people have been some organizations have been changing their contracts to actually include it but even then they're still advising them that this is what they're doing because you know this is about the data the use of data is as much for the benefit of the of the employees and the workforce as it is for the organizations so i think we've got a We've got to think carefully about, you know, doing the basics right. Make sure managers don't know whether somebody has or hasn't, you know, provided some data. You know, always look at the collective aggregate. Don't look at individuals. You know, keep it an anonymized. And more importantly, you know, also think about the ethical aspects of using data. You know, ethics for me is the gap between what an organization can do with data and what it should do with data. And, and you know, the, the power of technology is, is fantastic. And the systems that we've got around are now fantastic. You know, and, and Shakun, you're, you know better than me. I mean, you know, how do you think technology and HR is evolving to enable organizations to unleash the potential of people analytics 
whilst understanding some of these, these constraints and issues that we've got. That's a very important point because the way use of data is getting sophisticated, the technology yeah. is equally uh, you know, progressing to make that uh, possible for the two to get married and, and create very meaningful outcome for the employee. Three, four things that are very clear and I think every employee needs to understand that, every HR professional needs to understand. More than 25% organizations have actually gone and invested more in fresh technology and fresh applications to be able to track more employee data, largely with the intention of A, providing health and safety cover to the employee. Second, to measure and impact their productivity during these times. Now, this crisis will be over one day, very soon, hopefully. Yes. But this remote working and more importantly, the distributed workforce that it will leave at as its footprint will always remain. And therefore, organizations will need to look at technology very, very differently. The individuals have to get more comfortable with the kind of data that you share. You can't have the best for both worlds. My advice would be either you choose uh, a, a, a flexi working kind of an environment and become more relaxed about what data is getting tracked or what is being shared with you. Or you can find yourself to a particular uh, office location and then be, uh, you know, saving. And, and that's the trade off that the employees would have to do. On the right. technology front, I think machine learning, artificial intelligence, higher order mathematical modeling that you talked about earlier are now all getting embedded into the system. They are making the, 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 the applications much more influential in terms of being able to give insights and not just report on data. That is point number one. Secondly, the nudge based analytics will actually define the future of work. What I mean here is it will be analytics that will tell me, hey, you know what, Shakun, you've been on Zoom calls like eight hours today. Why don't you, you know, take a chill pill? Or I mean, that's that's the story. My day started today at 5.30 a.m. And I'm just realizing it's, it's too much of, of Zoom. Or can it tell me uh, I have not spoken to one of my 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 teammates probably it's time for me to connect and do a one-on-one -on -one. so these are the things where they will really impact life in a very normal manner so when you i you and i use a google map we don't use the the sophistication of the algorithm that is running on we use the purpose and solve a problem and move on and most of the times we are very subconscious that or, or unconscious that we've used data and analytics and I think HR analytics is now getting into that realm. How do you see uh, technology playing, playing a role there? Well, I, I, I think you can't do analytics without data, you know, and um, again, <laughs> back in, in the book, you know, I, we've sort of put together a sort of a, it's not a maturity model, but it's a frame that talks about, you know, tactical HR and using metrics um, you know, a more systematic way of reporting in an operational sense, which is drawing on technology and then making the shift in terms of, you know, looking at from a more strategic HR perspective at, at doing some of this sort of analytical work, which, yes, may require somebody with more statistical skills. But, you know, also there are some elements of it that can be done by, you know, an HR practitioner or maybe somebody who's an expert on numbers in HR already, maybe in the reward function, you know, et cetera. And then the fourth aspect is obviously the ultimate, as I regard it as, you know, probably, probably having an expert in analytics or maybe a team of people who are then starting to work with the business partners to make sure that it's done. I, I think the key advice I would say is, please do not wait to try and get perfect data because a that's never going to happen and b people will have lost patience in waiting for you to approve the concept behind it if mm -hmm. you just wait for your data to be perfect so you, you've almost got to park one of the methods you know which has been key for hr which is perfection and, and doing everything 100 percent right we've almost got to just park it but still may maybe work with perfect data that's maybe only 50 or 60 percent of the amount of people you're, that you're, got, you're right? so you're so bang on there because it is also you know the world was still trying to argue about flexi working and a whole lot of people were saying let us get the data let's get the proof of concept and so on and so forth 
one yes. crisis hit and we were left with no choice and i think you're right using data is now reaching that uh, moment where you 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 would not see people in the offices so they would you will not have that gut feeling about what they are feeling what they are going through and all that art of uh, hr is now going to become the mathematics of hr or data of hr yes. so dev yes. i know you you wrote this book and interestingly the the day of launch uh, you know happened to be in the lockdown yet the book is so popular i have had a, a read through and it's it's amazing some of the uh, real life examples from your experience that you have given are great so i'm sure uh, people will get their copies but uh, as a parting advice what are your uh, two three uh, important uh, suggestions uh, to the hr people who are watching us uh, on this talk today well uh, i i think first of all uh, i think don't fear the data you know i, I think aspiring to be you know, for some time, have to talk the language of the business. And I'm afraid to say that's data driven. Um, I, every HR practitioner is going to have to learn and understand the way in which you can use data. You know, uh, um, information and, and, and stats which I collected on HR capability globally in the book is indicating that HR don't like numbers. They're not very good at it. Um, but, you know, that, that's, that's neither here nor there it can be done, you know, and I think, think about how you want to try and help people become more au fait or more comfortable with data, maybe have capability calls about it, you know, in your network, maybe create a portal, you know, where people can, can look at it and, and look at articles about how their organizations have done it. You know, maybe start off with three or four people who are very data savvy, maybe they can start to simplify it for colleagues. And, and then, I think the critical thing is that HR leaders have got to be supportive of this because, you know, if I think about the post pandemic situation, executives will go for the easy option, which is cut costs. Okay. And, and I think HR have got to stand up with a bit of courage and start to say, okay, it's very easy to cut the cost now to release people and we can always recruit them again in, you know, 12 months time when it's a, you know, a, maybe a better market position, but let's look at, you know, what's the benefit of keeping those people, how, what if we got them operating at a level which was on a par with high performers? What would be the difference in income? What would, how would that express itself in financial terms? So I think we've got to be more challenging and we've really got to, if you like, be proactive, show some courage and demonstrate that we can ask some questions that make the executives think. And I think data can be a part of that equation. Yeah. And I think this is what you meant when you talked about the 3D of uh, a people analytics, data, design, and digitization. I, I, I just love that and I can't uh, uh, wait to go back to the book. Uh, Dave, thank you so much. This has been a very interesting conversation. I really miss our days of such conversations together. Uh, and Indeed. of course, the famous uh, walk in Abu Dhabi, right? <laughs> Indeed. It's almost as hot here in the UK for, uh, as it was in Abu Dhabi. But um, yes, they were happy days. And uh, But, you know, good learning um, in terms of using data and trying to get people to think about how to make the most of it. So in actual fact, you know, those days are probably reminiscent and reflective of some of the challenges that, that are faced today. Absolutely. By all means. Hey, Dave, thank you so much for your time. Have My a pleasure. good weekend. Stay safe. Indeed, you too.